Description. I was weak I trained. When Sasuke left, he brought him back. I became a girl I got up from my knees and became a beautiful kunoichi. But now I'm in a different world with Sasuke and I'm at a loss. There's too much going on here. My parents are still alive. The Uchiha clan is intact and Itachi is in the village. I'm considered a weak spineless girl, unable to hold the kanai. But we'll show them what we're worth, right, Kurama? I welcome everyone to the channel. This is a new story about Naruto, where he gets a second chance, but in the guise of a girl. Before you start watching, please like and subscribe to the channel, this is very important to me. Also you can subscribe to my Boosty, there will be exclusive content that is not on YouTube. Enjoy watching. Prologue. After defeating Kagaya and Madara's death, we came back triumphant, but that word was bitter in our hearts. Yes, we won, but at what cost? Many good people died, many were left crippled. I myself left many friends on the battlefield. I once promised Nagato that I would stand up to all the hatred in the world, but now I can see how naive I was. No, I didn't hate everything around me, but I began to understand the gravity of my decision only now, after seeing what once flourishing countries had become. The victory was too expensive for us, the price we paid is too high. Kakashi-sensei, Sakura, Sasuke, and I were all honored as heroes. We were admired. They looked up to us. And we, we tried to learn how to just live again. I will not say that Sasuke was immediately forgiven upon his return, but no one began to throw away such a strong shinobi. He was left under my responsibility, or rather mine and Kakashi-sensei's. And if I was placed in the same house with him, or rather, in the house of my parents, which miraculously survived the pogrom organized by pain in Kanoha, then Sensei had a worse time. Kakashi was returned to the service of the NBU, and Sasuke and I were made his wards. We didn't resist, thinking it would be better this way. The shock of Kagai's gift being left to me for some reason was too great. And that old hag did her best and we noticed it after it was activated. But perhaps, everything in order. After the war, we were all very busy, especially in the first week, and then it became easier. Most of the wounded either recovered or died, and we no longer had to fight to get someone else's life out of the clutches of the Shinigami. In the first few hours, we were short of everything. Irenans, dressings, medicines, porters, tents. I can continue the list indefinitely. My suddenly awakened healing abilities were just as welcome. I used the power that gave Kurama to me, grumbling, and healed everyone I could. No, I also used my own chakra, but it was much less than what my friend gave me. In the beginning, everything went well. I healed without feeling sorry for myself. Only Sasuke could find me and catch me in the crowd of my clones who were doing the same thing, and then tie me up and send me to eat and rest. I was angry with him and grateful at the same time. Especially when Kagaya's delayed gift activated, on the tenth day. I vaguely remember what happened. Here I am treating another shinobi, here Sasuke comes up and says in a commanding tone to go to rest, freezing objections in one glance, here we go together to a tent where we have lunch with friends, and the next memory is how I woke up in some small village from which people were evacuated before the war. Between these two gaps, there is darkness and a terrible, all-consuming pain. At first, I didn't understand what had happened, but something definitely changed. I looked around in surprise, at myself. And myself? Thin fingers with neat nails, long golden hair, breasts somewhere in the third size and the most terrible thing for a man, the complete absence of signs by which you can tell that I'm still a man. My brain was in a daze as I groped myself in shock, and then I lost consciousness, although Karama yanked me back into my subconscious, interrupting my incipient tantrum. By yanking me back into my subconscious and slapping me on the back of the head, 
he was able to regain my composure in this peculiar way. Although I still sat in a stupor for about an hour after Karama's explanation. According to him, it turned out that Kagaya tied the transformation of my body to the use of healing chakra. I.e. if I didn't use it in such quantities, nothing would have happened, but I didn't know. Yes, even if I did, I would have done the same. If that's the price for saving lives, then I'm willing to pay. I'm a girl now. And if it weren't for Rikudo and Sasuke's interference, there's no telling what would have happened. Together they were able to do the impossible, in parallel with the past changes in my body, with the support of the tailed ones, a part of whose powers will now always be with me, they changed my perception. According to Karama, they had a complete restructuring of the worldview. I, I know that I was a guy, but I calmly perceive myself as a girl, and I feel as if I have always been one. I am grateful to them for this. As soon as I came back to reality, Sasuke entered the room. He didn't look well. His skin, pale from birth, was even whiter, and his cheeks were sunken, making his black eyes look like holes in an abyss. From him, I learned, ah, that it had been ten days since I lost consciousness, and that I was lucky that Sakura and Tsunade Biechan were there. They helped us survive the first, most difficult hours of transformation. They also didn't let the news of my sex change leak out. I'm lucky there weren't many people there at that time. Kakashi, Shizen, Gara, Bai, Sasuke, Tsunade, and Sakura. They know, and it's up to me to tell the rest of them. However, it would be a bit difficult to hide the changes in my appearance, so Sasuke and Karama both urged me to do it as early as possible. Amazing unanimity. I had to agree, but I couldn't do it now anyway. La, I needed to recover. As a result, we arrived in the village about two weeks after I woke up. After quickly reporting back to Tsunade Beichan and receiving the happy news that Sasuke was forgiven, and not so happy that we were now living under the same roof, I didn't know how to react. During the two weeks I spent in the company of Sasuke and the occasional drop in Kakashi Sensei, I realized how boring he was, but at the same time, I was hooked. I've never been looked after or cared for, and he's taken care of me all the time he's been around. This was evident in small things, such as breakfast on the table in the morning, or a blanket draped over my shoulders when I fell asleep in the living room. During all this time, we didn't even really fight. And I didn't want to lose it. I was desperately afraid of being alone again. Therefore, I was even happy with the Hokage's decision and easily agreed to live together with Team, however, just like him. On the same day, all our people who were still alive found out that I had returned, as, and came to the housewarming party. I remember their shock and disbelief that such a thing could have happened. To my delight, the pity and contempt I had been dreading to see didn't register in their eyes. There was sympathy, but no pity no contempt, and that's good. Yes, I have great friends, even though the war left its mark on everyone. There are no more children who shouted that they would surpass each other. On that day, we just sat and talked about nothing, drank sake, remembered the fallen, promised to do everything not to let them down, to justify their hopes. It was after midnight when we left, surprisingly sober, even though we'd had a lot to drink. The next few months were a blur as Sasuke and I were promoted to ANBU. We trained and carried out missions, cleared up the pile of problems that had befallen us after the war. So a year or even a year and a half passed. We helped restore what was possible and build new ones where there was nothing to restore. There was a lull. During this time, Sasuke and I became even closer. This was facilitated by living together and being in the same squad. We have once again become a well-coordinated combat team, and not only that. The moment when we became a couple, I didn't notice, it just became natural, to fall asleep and wake up together, just to be close. I don't remember who came first, and I didn't need to. We didn't talk about love, 
we didn't need words. Two children, left alone and betrayed many times, found solace in each other's arms. We became a family, finding in each other what we missed so much. Our house was filled with warmth and comfort. I finally learned what family means and what it's like to be expected and worried. It was really nice to know that there was someone who cared about you, someone who really cared about you. I would go home and know that they were waiting for me there. I'm sure Sasuke had the same thoughts. Two orphans who lost their family early and found it in each other. Friends were happy for me, for us. Even Sakura sincerely congratulated me, but there were also those who were not satisfied with such a family as ours. There were those who thought, and who will be born to two so different, and at the same time the same guys. They are also strong individually, but what if their children inherit all the talent of their parents? These fools decided to eliminate a non-existent threat, not even knowing that they were following Kagaya's lead. My curse was gender reassignment, and she left Sasuke a worse gift. It became the key. His violent death would mean the destruction of the world, although if he wanted to, he could have prevented it. But he didn't want to, and I understand and don't blame him. Rinnegan is too dangerous a toy. And if you add to it his increased capabilities and a greatly increased supply of chakra, and if you deprive a person of the last dear creature, do you think he will fight? Will there be any trace of humanity left in him that has been asleep for many years and has just woken up? The answer is obvious. Although at first everything was quite peaceful. The next task is no better or worse than the others. Sasuke and I needed to check the last place of the battle with Kagaya. There were some anomalies there, and as the strongest shinobi, we were sent there. I don't blame Beichan, she was cheated too, but she can't get it back. We set off immediately after receiving the task and got to the scene of the accident in the shortest possible time. After talking to the guys from the cordon, located at a considerable distance from the place we need, and having received data on the latest observations, we went to the very center. In vain, very much in vain. There were indeed anomalies, but they were artificially caused and activated as soon as we entered the zone of action. The last thing I remember that day was a desperate cry of, Naruto! And the red eyes of my beloved, burning with madness, yes, my beloved, I wish I hadn't realized that just now. Then there was darkness, although, to my surprise, I didn't stop feeling Sasuke and Kurama next to me but I didn't have the strength to be surprised anymore, and then I woke up. Chapter 1 The Shock How does it feel to wake up and start realizing that something is wrong? I know now. I woke up in a tub full of red water. My whole body ached, the water was icy cold and somehow smelled like blood. I struggled to my feet and only then noticed the strange stripes on my wrist which quickly disappeared under the influence of Karama's chakra, which spread a soothing warmth over my body. Heck, I feel like I've opened my wrists. Stop. Why are my hands so small? Where am I anyway? The last thing I remember was shouting to team. Wait, where is he? Where did Sasuke go? Naruto, come down to me. Karama's voice sounded too muffled in my head. I didn't keep him waiting, but got out of the tub with difficulty, dried myself off with a towel that was hanging there, put on a robe, and flopped down on the floor, going down into my subconscious with an effort of will. It met me with the usual kind of sewer, only after I became a jinchuriki of all the biju without sealing them in me. I didn't see all the biju at once, and here they were all, even if they were small. And Karama was scary to look at. He looked worse than after I took all his chakra away from him before the war. What happened? I asked. This is going to hurt a little. Karama informed me, and in the next second, I was flooded with memories. I thought back to the girl's life I'd found myself in. All thirteen years of being a joyless local Naruto were being screwed into my brain. She was an outcast. 
She was despised for being the daughter of Yandane, which is a disgrace to the great Shinobi. She wasn't born with a Kyubi, but life wasn't easy. Timid and modest by nature, after the assassination attempt in childhood, she tried not to attract attention, becoming a gray mouse. Her parents were always busy and couldn't pay much attention to her, and Isan and Anisan, who she always stayed with, didn't take her seriously due to the seven-year difference, often running off with friends and leaving her alone. This affected her training, because she had no one to ask for advice, and as a result, she was considered untalented. Loneliness is her constant companion. The child decided that no one needed her. She got tired of being indifferent and decided to leave, not to bother anyone else. She opened her wrists. What was that? I asked softly, hissing in pain as I awoke from the flood of other people's thoughts and feelings. We've moved to another world. Chaomei chirped. You got caught in some kind of warp in space and pulled us down with you. Isabu exclaimed. Ha! Huh. If it hadn't caught us, we would have been left in a dying world. Son Goku chuckled. We don't have much time left, we'll have to sleep. Matatabi hissed. My chakra is running out, and Naruto's new body won't be able to handle that much. Sorry, I wanted to have some fun. Shikaka said. Don't listen to them, Naruto. Karama said calmly. They're right about a lot of things, though. You saw the memory of yourself here, that girl died. You are now Namike's Naruto. I was surprised, and as I looked around at all the tailed ones who had somehow decided to gather together again in my subconscious, I again remembered everything they had said, exclaiming even louder. Uh? Don't shout, Naruto. Kurama snorted. And then, looking at the rest of the tailed ones, he said, You can go to sleep. I'll explain everything myself. All right, we'll leave it to you, brother. Duki said calmly, and the tailed ones slowly faded into my subconscious, although the feeling that I could use their power if necessary didn't disappear, just became weaker. And? You and the Uchiha fell into a trap. As a result, you were sucked into a space-time anomaly. Karama answered me tiredly, lowering his head to his paws. What did you say about the destruction of the world? I digested the question. That world has lost the last direct descendants of Ashura and Indra. My red-haired friend chuckled. The Uchiha also weakened it a lot to go after you, taking most of the chakra out of that cage. Are you sure? I asked grimly. I don't know, but as an option, yes. Karama chuckled. However, both of you will not be able to return anyway, because your bodies could not have remained intact in that funnel, or rather, they completely turned into mince meat. You said Sasuke was here, I said, thinking about Karama's words and admitting they were true. Where is he? I'm not your Uchiha's babysitter, Karama said indignantly. And anyway, it's time your name is called. He added and forcibly pulled out of his subconscious. When I opened my eyes and recovered a little, I actually heard a vaguely familiar female voice calling for everyone to have breakfast. Only everyone, not me specifically. Don't be a bore. Karama immediately responded. Silently ignoring his indignation, I get up and go to get dressed, first remembering to drain the bloody water from the bath and take a shower. Shinobi are too sensitive creatures to smell blood, and I don't want to answer awkward questions. In the same silence, I open the wardrobe and inspect the clothes of the local Naruto, or rather, already mine. Well, what can I say, of course, after serving in the ANBU, I stopped following the red color so fanatically, but even so, I've never worn such nondescript things. I didn't need it. And now, looking at all this splendor, I involuntarily wince. On the one hand, it is impossible to stand out, and on the other, to put on this squalor? I had to spend another ten minutes trying to find something brighter among the gray things. The result was dark, tight breeches and a red tank top with a swirl sign on the back. It's still grim, 
but considering the way I remember the local Naruto dressed, I went a little overboard. Although I don't care, because I can't behave like a local Naruto if I really want to, so I won't even try, although I won't stick out too much until there's a reason. It's decided. Let's start with small things, such as clothing. Let the family get used to it. When I went downstairs, my first instinct was to run away. I stifled the urge. But even so, I felt out of place. My mother and father are alive and eating a quiet breakfast. I didn't even have to work hard to act like the local Naruto. Silently, trying to make myself as inconspicuous as possible, I slid into my seat and began to eat what Kachan had placed in front of me when she noticed me. I couldn't taste it, and my thoughts were all about my father and mother being alive, and the presence of adult Nisan and Enisan who were completely oblivious to me. When I finished my breakfast, I got up and used the reflexes of my body to wash the dishes and tried to slip out without being noticed. I was about to make it, but as I was leaving the kitchen, my father's cold voice stopped me. You have an exam today, and I hope you don't embarrass me, Naruto. I turn around and find his eyes dripping with pity. It's painful. I remember the way my father looked at me the first and last time we met. He was proud of me, he loved me, and here? Pity. This is how people look at cripples and lepers. I'm not like that. It's not my father. My father would have loved me any day. Rage rises from the depths of my soul, and I want to destroy everything and finally tear this expression from a man with a face so similar to my father's. Naruto, calm down. Kurama growled in my subconscious and gave me a mental slap on the back of the head, bringing me to my senses. Thank you. I say softly to my loyal friend, and looking straight into the eyes of the person I should call father, I say, Definitely Hokage-sama. My words made him flinch as if he'd been struck, but he didn't say anything. A turn in the direction of her mother, who looks surprised, and a quiet. Thank you for breakfast, Kachan. I turn around and grab my gear and walk out of the house, where even the walls seem to be pressing down on me. I need to relax, and I have time. According to local Naruto's memories, the exam will be at noon, and it's still morning. Just enough time to see what my body is capable of and rest. Training will perfectly get rid of unnecessary thoughts and allow me to get myself in order. How much Sasuke is missing? I hope you're all right. I got to the landfills in record time for this body, but according to my feelings, I trudged like a snail. Besides, I had to walk on the ground, because the attempt to start jumping on roofs ended badly. But at least I didn't break anything. Our favorite remote training ground with Sasuke met me with desolation, but this is even good, because, judging by the state, it is rarely visited, which means that I will calmly practice alone. The training session was much shorter than I was used to. Only half an hour had passed, and it felt like I'd been training with Lee and Gai-sensei all day. Leaning wearily against the training poles dug into the ground, she asked into the void. Why is everything like this? I do not know, Naruto. Kurama, who had been wisely silent and watching me all this time, answered me. But I do know one thing. You're strong, and you have me. Together, we can do everything. Thank you, my friend. I tell him softly, and the corners of my mouth turn up involuntarily. Kurama is right, I have him, and Sasuke. Remembering the topic. He involuntarily breaks out, Damn it! What's the matter, Naruto? Kurama asks me lazily. Sasuke. What about Sasuke? He asks again. What do you think Kurama-chan is going to do if our little brunette wakes up in the midst of living corpses and doesn't find me around? I ask my red-haired friend absently. Damn it! Kurama agreed with me. Chapter 2. The Academy my fears were practically not justified. Well, at least no explosions were heard from the Uchiha quarter and no one started sounding the alarm in Kanoha. 
So the hope that Sasuke held back was alive, although, knowing his character, it would have been better if something had exploded. But anyway, we made it to the start of the academy exam, wisely deciding that it would be rather rash to go to the red-eyed clan's quarter. Imperceptibly, the time came when you need to go to the academy. After tidying myself up by the stream and pulling my hair back in the usual ponytail, I went to the exam. My appearance went unnoticed, but it was long past the time when I was trying to attract attention, so I calmly walked into the classroom and immediately felt, yes. I can't confuse these feelings with anything else. Sasuke was furious. However, it is not difficult to understand him. He never liked noisy companies, and here, just nostalgia. Don't be nostalgic, but save the younger generation. Karama chuckled, clearly recalling the same situation in my home world. Otherwise, he's going to hit everyone with Chidori. Do you think so? I chuckled. I'm sure. He snorted back at me. Just look at the aura around him. Hmm. Okay, I agree because it's impossible not to notice that shadows are gathering next to the Uchiha, and I go straight to the place where the girls are gathered. They naturally ended up near the desk of Sasuke, who did not change his habit and sat down near the window on the third desk. Can I sit next to you, Sasuke-kun? Sakura's clear voice reaches me. Still what, Lobastea, with Sasuke-kun I will sit, pushes her away from the desk Eno and pleadingly glancing in the direction of the gloomy brunette, asks, Yes, Sasuke-kun? Girls don't fight. I say soothingly and, having already looked at the Uchiha who jumped up at my appearance, I add, Team, move over. Ha 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 ha. Oh, I can't oh. Kurama snickered, watching Sasuke move closer to me and further away from the window, before glaring into my eyes with an overly attentive gaze. Now I'll have to climb over the empty seat to get in. What are you going to do, Naruto? To the topic. I hissed, calmly meeting his attentive gaze, and to the accompaniment of wild laughter in my subconscious and no less wild silence already in the office. With an unperturbed look, I simply did a somersault, jumped over him and, falling to the offered place, calmly said, You're worse off. Hmm? A little surprised. So you could block me out from the rest of the girls, and so the second empty seat next to you on the other side. I explained, knowing perfectly well that he wanted to say his. Hmm. Not for nothing that we have been communicating with him for so many years. Pfft. He snorted proudly, but I could see perfectly well that he hadn't thought of such a scenario. He was already used to me being around and the other girls trying not to make me angry and therefore not to encroach on mine. It's okay, it's good for you. I repelled the attempt to push pity. He? Looked me in the eye pleadingly. Okay, I said, letting Sasuke sit down by the window again and block me out from the annoying groupies. He's making ropes out of you. Karama informed me mockingly. Come on, Karama, I said. They'll eat him alive. Naruto. My forgotten classmates called out to me. I don't even need to look back. And so it's clear that everyone is glaring at me. Someone with interest, someone with curiosity, someone with hatred. But one thing is clear, the fact that our little performance did not leave anyone indifferent. Yes? It looked at them. How dare you sit down with Sasuke Kun? These semi-misunderstandings screamed. I asked her to sit down with me, Sasuke said coldly, and looked at the group indifferently. No one else asked, and the crowd, catching one of his signature looks, began to rapidly disperse. However, another reason for the rapid dispersal of the crowd was Irika Sensei, who entered the office. He waited until the last students were seated at their desks, gave a solemn speech, and then announced the beginning of the exam. The exams were quick and boring, but I could be sure that I passed everything with a perfect score. Sasuke stayed close by the entire time, causing everyone to be wildly surprised. 
although I don't think he was moved by anyone's looks, and neither was I. The only thing that was frustrating was that we couldn't talk properly. There were too many people around all the time. Therefore, after the exam, we decided to go to remote training grounds and talk without any agreement. But His Majesty Chance intervened in our plans. As soon as we waited for the results to be announced and the forms to be delivered, we had to leave Sasuke's fan club. They are in a deranged state tried to demand from the Yukiha date. I had to grab him by the hand and run away to avoid casualties. After running around the academy for a while and barely hiding from our pursuers, we got out of the gate. To our misfortune, we were noticed, and we had to speed up urgently in order to have time to hide around the bend. Just as we turned the corner, we saw my newfound Nai Sen and Itachi walking peacefully towards us. Hey, 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 I'll figure it out later. This is a chance. I exchange glances with Sasuke, nod at each other, and jump up to them, applying henge to ourselves, only eighteen-year-olds. On time. We barely had time to jump up to the guys who were taken aback by this, when our pursuers ran out from around the bend. Were you looking for someone? I asked softly, watching the wonderful sight of a panting bunch of Nedekanoiki. Um, no, Eno said, a little hesitantly. Really? I asked softly. Then can you help us? Yes, of course, Sakura replied, already regaining her composure. What did you want? Thanks, Iglode. Then you probably know Namike's Naruto? I would like to congratulate my relative on passing the exams. She passed, didn't she? We wanted to celebrate this joyful event in a cafe. Um, she's already gone, along with Sasuke. The pursuers answered me uncertainly, while glancing at Namike's Aoi and Achiha Itachi standing in a stupor, although their eyes kept returning to me and Sasuke standing next to me. Sasuke? I added surprise to my voice. Who's that? Had Naruto gone off somewhere with the boy? I had panicked to my voice and start to ask, folding my arms in prayer. Who are his parents? Is he a normal boy? Is Naruto going to be okay? She's just a little girl. We need to find her now, Aoi-san. With the last words, I grab onto Anai-san, who is standing next to me, and start shaking him. Um, we should probably go. The girls muttered softly, and sidled away from the panicked me. Ugh, it's gone. I breathed out with relief and let go of my brother who had gone to the astral plane. Hmm, a great actress died in you. Sasuke said mockingly, making sure that our pursuers were gone, scattering the henge along the way. It's your fault, by the way. I said, offended. Pfft, said Sasuke arrogantly to me. Yes, yes. You. We were running away from your groupies. I protested. Hmm? It's mocking, but there's a phrase in my eyes that says I don't have to interfere. No, I couldn't. I don't leave my friends in trouble. I said indignantly. H.N.? Raising Annie brow questioningly. No, I don't mean you. I mean the others. You were ready to kill them. I smirked at him, watching the irritation flare in his eyes. Pfft. Indignantly. I know they're no match for you, but I don't think that would have stopped you. Um. Naruto, Aoi and I, who had been watching our showdown in silence, said. Seeing that we were both paying attention to him, he continued more confidently. How do you know what he means with his PF and hum? Yes. I'm also interested, by the way. Itachi echoed the question of my newfound Nai-san. I've known him for too long, Kurama prompted, and I obediently repeated his words, only then realizing that, judging by the memories of the local Naruto, yes, I've known him since childhood. Although the local Naruto tried not to communicate with him, it could be too traumatic for her. Yes? Anai-san asked incredulously. I've known him for a long time, too, 
but I didn't understand any of his answers. Similarly, Itachi agreed shortly with all his words. Well, I don't know. I shrugged. You're smart. Come up with an explanation yourself. I see the boy's faces fall, and I hear Sasuke's muffled cough. Is it just me, or is he ready to laugh? But Karama was ready to beat me up for such behavior. But seriously, and I said, I sighed wearily, mentally slapping myself on the back of the head before it was too early to get burned. I'm tired of this life. Yesterday I realized that this cannot continue. I'm going to be a genin, so I'll go on missions, and anything can happen there. I don't want to cause Kachan to cry. I decided to change. So you can assume that the Naruto you knew yesterday is dead. Imato, don't say anything and I said. I cut him off. I suggest we go to lunch, and at the same time you can tell us how your exams went. Itachi interjected, giving Aoi the necessary time to rest. Sasuke nodded and gave me a warning look. I had to agree. Chapter 3. The Conversation Have you ever gone to a cafe with two Uchiha girls? No. Lucky people. Now I know what it means to go to a cafe. Not only with the two Uchiha girls, but also with an Aisan who had awakened the brotherly feelings that had been sleeping soundly before. Everyone seems familiar, but the atmosphere is grim. No, I understand what's going on with Sasuke. What a storm of feelings he has when he sees Itachi alive. But why is he tense? Ototo. Itachi began, then stopped. It's okay, and I said. Sasuke said coldly, but I could see how hard it was for him to say it and how Itachi flinched at the cold response. Sasuke, stop it, I said, looking at him grimly. And at the same time enlighten me, what did you have there such a thing happened? P.F. Sasuke, I won't leave you alone, and you know it, I said calmly, sipping my tea. I woke up with unfriendly faces poking me with a kanai. He said shortly, Chidori. Then Itachi arrived. A conversation with my father. The academy. That's it. He continued in mince sentences. And I was wondering why there weren't any explosions coming from the Uchiha quarter. He was having fun without it. Naruto, find out what time it was then. Kurama suddenly interrupted and asked me. What for? I asked with interest. Your lives in that world were connected. That's probably the case here, Karama began to explain. If that's the case, then this world has pulled you in to fill a possible void. Do you think that not only the local Naruto died here, but also the local Sasuke? I asked, a little stiffly. As an option, Karama agreed. What time was it? I voiced the question that now interested not only Karama, but also me. Around four in the morning, Sasuke said, glancing at the tents and I said, I woke up around the same time, Karama informed me. And in anticipation of your question, I was the one who kept you awake right away, so you might not have been able to stand the pain. There was too much difference in the amount of chakra you had with Naruto here. Not to mention that she wasn't a Jinchuriki. That's why you didn't wake up until eight. The rest of the time we spent on restoring the chakra canals of this body and just restoring it. I see. I said back to both of them. I was also surprised that you looked a little pale, but there it is, like, so what do you understand, Naruto-chan? Itachi asked mildly. Sasuke was kidnapped in order to influence his loved ones. From what I heard, it was someone familiar and from your clan. That's why they managed to knock Sasuke unconscious without much difficulty. I chuckled, taking a sip of tea and continuing. When he woke up, it smelled like fried meat for those losers. I may be wrong, but you probably figured out their location. Itachi-san? It looked at the older Uchiha with a question and got a curt nod in response. They decided to kill him quietly but Sasuke came to his senses before they could complete their plan. 
Sasuke's eternal reflex to destroy everything that interferes with a peaceful life also worked here. Without thinking twice, he prigaliable all right on, and then controlled the kunai on the throat. Then you, Itachi-san, burst in, but you couldn't win the laurels of the savior, since your little brother has already dealt with everything himself. After an unpleasant conversation, Sasuke slammed the door and left for the academy. You had a nagging conscience and worry about your stupid little brother, so you went to meet him from the academy and apologized for your father's slowness. Am I right? Yes. Itachi nodded dejectedly. And you understood all this from the few words they said? Aoi and I was surprised. Naruto, remember what I was able to quickly pick out from the memory we inherited, Kurama said. Sasuke was gone for a few days before the exam. The local Naruto heard how Makoto, Sasuke's mother, came to see Kushina and cried that he was missing. Nesan, Sasuke was gone for a few days before the exams. Yes, and Oto-san recently goes gloomy and often meets with Fugaku-san. I shrugged, although I was overreacting about Uchiha Fugaku, but he really came in the other day, judging by the memory I got, and then locked himself in the office with my father. I also heard that Mikoto-san came to see Kachan. They were talking about Sasuke missing. Putting Itachi's behavior and Sasuke's words together is pretty easy. Still, he continued to stare at me suspiciously. Oh, and I, I have a feeling that you suspect that I stole it. I looked mockingly into my brother's green eyes. No, he averted his eyes. You just don't look like yourself. And I, San. When was the last time you were interested in me? I grinned, and seeing the confused look on his face, I added, That's exactly what you don't remember. Missions and training sessions take up too much time. You don't even remember the last time you talked to me, and didn't just say hello at the table. Then how can you say I don't look like myself? To my surprise, the last words came out with resentment, and my eyes stung. What the hell? These are residual emotions. Karama explained softly. Although the merger has been completed, the consequences will still be felt for some time. They will not be able to exert a strong influence, but in situations like this, they will break through. I hope there won't be any more gifts. I asked grimly, trying to get my emotions under control, which Sasuke undoubtedly helped me with, just squeezing my hand for a moment and then letting go when he saw the strange look in Itachi's eyes. The others aren't so bad. Kurama chuckled in response. You now have another element besides the futon, or even more than one, but I do not know which one. Take the chakra-defining paper and find out. At least something pleases. I chuckled. Imato. My brother's voice distracted me from my conversation with my red-haired friend. Sorry, you're right. Is there anything I can do to make it up to you? He scared me guiltily. You can. I nodded, and in my subconscious, Karama, guessing my plans, roared with laughter. You're free today, aren't you? You don't have a mission? Yes, you're right, he said after a moment's hesitation. And tomorrow? I asked again. Tomorrow before lunch he said, looking at me in surprise. Then choose. I'd been solemnly. You can either go shopping with me or train. Pfft, said Sasuke sympathetically. You got it, Aoi-san. Um, I think I'd better go shopping, too. I nodded vigorously. I've been wanting to update my wardrobe for a long time, but I didn't get the chance. I winked cheerfully at a grinning Sasuke. Sasuke, I'll meet you at our training ground as usual tomorrow morning. Imato, goodbye, Itachi-san. Don't be offended by Sasuke, he's just shy. Sasuke, stop being a badass and talk to your brother. I shot the Uchiha a stern look. He really needs to talk to Itachi. For too long, he has borne the weight of guilt for his death in our world. Here everything is different, but the problems are no less. And if you don't know what to talk about, practice. 
All my experience with you says that a fight is the best way to understand each other. Aoi and I tried to reach out to me. That's nice. Let's go, and I sent. I grabbed my brother's white hands as he rolled his eyes in resignation and went to the shops. No, nothing special, but I really need to buy a couple of bright things, as well as practical hiking clothes. At the same time, I'll go to the shinobi shop, otherwise there are only books and no equipment in my room. You can't do that. Especially since an Isan pays. Why not? I'll talk to Sasuke later. He won't run away from me now, and tomorrow we won't have any of our brothers around. In addition, I am sure that after a trip to the shops, my brother simply will not have the strength to be surprised and try to get to the truth. And what's the truth? I didn't leave Kanoha, and to suspect that someone was able to sneak into Yandame's house unnoticed and capture the mind of his most worthless daughter. I don't think there are many such dreamers. Chapter 4 Unexpected News The shopping trip was successful. Very. I felt tired myself, and it was Karama who was still healing me and invigorating me with small portions of his chakra. What to say about Aoi? When we got home, he tossed me a scroll of sealed purchases and sprawled out on the living room sofa with a blissful groan. While completely ignoring the questioning looks of the rest of the family, who, to my surprise, were completely assembled, well, except that my father wasn't there, but given his position, it's good if he comes at all. Aoi, oh, are you all right? Kachan asked him anxiously. My Imato is a monster, and Isen let out a heartfelt cry. I'm not a monster, I said indignantly. Besides, you offered to make amends. But I didn't think you were going to take me shopping. He groaned back. Half a day. For half a day. Run around all the shops. My life didn't prepare me for this. He said with a pained grimace. Just don't pretend that you didn't like it. I said, looking offended. We spent most of our time on you. That's the worst of it. He groaned. At least you've got something to wear on dates. I said, sticking out my tongue and running upstairs. Well, I didn't want to answer other people's questions. I really didn't want to. But listening to my brother's complaints with Karama's enhanced hearing was interesting. However, the idol did not last long. Tasan came in. After a few short sentences, he and Kachan and Nai San went to his office. I couldn't eavesdrop on what they were saying. The barrier that was placed on Tasan's office couldn't be easily bypassed. I had to put aside my curiosity until better times and go help set up Nai San's dinner. I hope that Nai San is not stupid and that my attempts to convince him that Sasuke and I want to be together and, most importantly, we will do better as a team will not go in vain. The rest of the evening passed quietly enough. I tried not to shine too much and tried to go to my room at the first opportunity. I was stopped by Kachan's happy voice. Kids, we want to tell you some good news. Soon you will have a little brother or sister. I stare at Kachan's not-so-prominent stomach in silence. There are a lot of thoughts running through my head. But the main thing is Ka, Chan's words in that world. He knew that there was a time when the Jinchuriki seal was greatly weakened. He had been waiting for this moment, and when it came, he stole the fox. Naruto, I don't want to cause any panic ahead of time, but our arrival has already weakened your mother's seal, because there can't be a few nine tales in the world. Karama informed me grimly. Can you handle him? I asked my friend quietly. Yes. Although it will most likely be a takeover or merger like you have with the remnants of the local Naruto's personality, Karama immediately answered me. Kachan, what's the deadline? My quiet voice somehow attracted a lot of attention. Almost three months, Naruto. She replied with a smile. Tosan, when and where will Chunin sure can be held? It looked at my father. In Kanoha in about six months, my father said, frowning. 
Then I advise you not to tell anyone the real terms. And it's best that Kassan is observed by the Iranians that you are sure of. I say firmly, looking at my relatives. I don't want to lose Kassan, but I'm willing to become a Jinchuriki if necessary. Naruto, what do you mean? Kachan's smile faded instantly. Kachan, you know very well that the seal weakens during pregnancy and is especially weak during childbirth. You have to close it every time after that. I said grimly. Your seal is already very weak because it has been renewed three times already. Therefore, it is better not to lead anyone into temptation. The Yandane family always has a lot of enemies. Kachan is a strong shinobi. Enisen, or Namikaze Nariko, protested. No matter how strong Kachan is, she'll need some time to recover after giving birth. I snapped. Not to mention that it takes time to resume printing. How do you know that, Naruto? Tisan asked harshly. From the scrolls. I smiled coldly. I had to get information from somewhere if the rest of the family was busy and didn't care about me. You, Tisan, should better hide the scrolls if you don't want them to be read. Naruto, you're too harsh with them. Kurama tried to rebuke me. It's all right. They'll put it down to stress. Look at how Tisan pulls Kasan down. I responded, watching as Tasan tried to say something, but Kachan stopped him, and Enisen somehow too guiltily averted his eyes. You're right, Naruto. Kachan said guiltily. You're right about everything. We shouldn't have forgotten about you. I don't blame you, Kachan, and I know you didn't have much time. But consider my words. It's too stressful a moment for you to give birth. There will be too many conditionally hostile shinobi in Kanoha. I can see an eye, San and Tisan frowning at each other from behind Kachan, and I can't help but wonder if they'll hit too big a jackpot if they take the risk. From their eyes, it is clear that they themselves had previously thought about such a scenario, but did not dare to say so head on. I see you've been thinking about it yourself, Tisan. I chuckle and get a nod in return. I can feel Kachan getting angry, and then I wrap it up. Well, I think you can do it without me. Kachan patted my head and looked at Tisan, saying affectionately, Me not to. I didn't bother to listen any further, but made my way away from the fighting that was beginning to unfold. And I san and any san followed close behind. Apparently, I wasn't the only one who realized that I smelled fried. Sometimes your mother's temper is useful, Naruto. Kurama commented mockingly on the unfolding events. I spent the rest of the evening sorting through my purchases and looking through the piles of scrolls and books in my room. It was quite surprising to look through all this, because there were a bunch of scrolls with few in techniques, descriptions of training with the elements, initial exercises in mastering genjutsu, and a whole bunch of medical literature. However, I didn't really need the latter, because after the war, Tsunade Biechan taught me personally. She was interested in what I would achieve if I not only knew how to heal, but also knew how to do it. I didn't feel much difference before and after the training, but I had to study hard, because Biechan's hand is heavy. I didn't even notice that I was falling asleep. Naruto, get up! Kurama's voice roused me from my dream. It's already morning, and you should be at your training spot with Sasuke in half an hour. Just a few more minutes. I muttered. I'll wait longer, but the Uchiha won't appreciate it if you're late. Kurama taunted me, but seeing that I didn't respond to his words, he growled. Up. Huh. What? Am I up yet? I stumbled out of bed tripping over the covers and falling down. I-T-T. Now I believe you're awake, Kurama said mockingly. Now get ready quickly. Spitfire, I muttered resentfully, but I didn't argue any further. I quickly completed all my morning tasks and managed to look into the kitchen, where I found a note that fit into four simple words. Gone, breakfast is on the table. I just had to chuckle 
because judging by the passion that flared up here that evening, my parents had gone to implement some of my advice. Rikuda will help them, and they don't want to lose only the acquired live kachan because of Tisan's stupidity or naivety. Perhaps, of course, it's just my paranoia, because Kachan's previous three pregnancies were normal and without consequences, but I don't want to take any chances. However, we still need to figure out a way to take Kyubi away from Kachan, and most importantly, to keep her alive and healthy. However, she has more chances to survive, because she is a pure blood Uzumaki, and even a Jinchuriki not from birth which means that her life does not depend on someone else's chakra as much as mine. Naruto Sasuke greeted me briefly. As it turned out, I was so lost in thought that I didn't even notice when I arrived at our meeting place. Tell me. He ordered, and when he saw my surprised look, he explained. I can see that something has happened to you. Kachan is pregnant. I said with a heavy sigh. Congratulations, he said calmly. Aren't you happy? Thanks and nodded and leaned against the Makiwara training area, closing my eyes wearily. After a short silence and setting up a barrier against listening, she asked, But Sasuke, do you know when Biju's seal of containment is particularly weak? Sasuke frowned. You never said that. Pregnancy and childbirth, Sasuke. During pregnancy, the chakra that normally feeds the seal is directed to the development of the fetus. During childbirth it is especially weak, because it lacks not only the chakra, but also the will, due to which deterrence occurs. When? What is it? He asked me softly. Six months. And most likely, they will fall on Chunin Shurken. The words came out with a kind of doom. Karama also says that our appearance has greatly weakened the seal. I'm afraid we'll have to step in sooner. Don't worry, Naruto. Sasuke took my hand reassuringly. You're not alone. We'll figure something out. Yes. I'm not alone. I echoed and smiled as I said. Thank you, Sasuke. Only I was so shocked by the news yesterday that I gave away some of my knowledge. I added, looking at him guiltily. We'll figure it out, he said, shaking his head. That's fine. What's all about me, yes, about me? I exclaimed with exaggerated cheerfulness. Tell me what happened yesterday. What happened yesterday? What is it? He asked. Sasuke. Chapter 5 Shards of memory he could not bear my whining for long and soon gave up and said, I don't know how to tell a beautiful story, so I'll show you. Hooray, I said happily, looking into his eyes without fear, which changed color to red after a moment. Sharingan. Yes, and all three volumes are in place. Apparently, I wasn't the only one who pumped the carcass during the transfer. You need to ask him what's going on with Mangekyo and Rinnegan, otherwise I, for example, don't dare enter the Biju mode. The chakra channels are too weak, even worse than I had in that world at this age. The Senin mod is also unavailable, or rather, some semblance of it is available, which allows you to scan the district and that's it. It's a pity I don't have a contract with Toads here, although it's easy to fix. Jeratora is with me. Even then San is still alive, as is his godfather. I hope there won't be any difficulties getting a contract, flashback. That bastard Itachi has already found our location. An unfamiliar male voice said, interrupting my thoughts. Apparently its owner was very annoyed. I look in that direction and see a strange black-haired man. You don't even need to ask him, and you can see that he's an Uchiha. What do we do with the brat? Another voice asked and I saw another red-eyed man. We can't get away with it in time. We're not going to make it anyway, the third man said irritably. Itachi isn't going alone, sure Sway and Abito are with him. The top three of our clan. We don't stand a chance. And they're probably not alone. 
Hokage-sama will not leave one of her students without a cover, and Itachi is a favorite of Uzumaki-heim. Then we'll get rid of him, the very first one said, and casually picked up an immobile black-haired teenager that I'm not surprised to recognize as Sasuke. It'll be fun to see Ichikun's face when he realizes that his beloved brother is dead. The backs of the men blocked the body of the teenager from my view, and after a few moments, I heard the echo of pain, judging by the sensations Sasuke, who transmits these memories to me, was stabbed in the liver. Terribly unpleasant wound, but Rinnegan allows you to heal and not such, would be the chakra. Another momentary darkness. Flashback. They were memories of a local Sasuke. Sasuke says softly in my ear. It turns out that we have already managed to sit down on the grass, leaning against the dug-in posts. However, he didn't let me focus on my feelings, dragging me back into Jinjutsu with the words. And these are already mine. Flashback at first, I had a quick flash of his last moments in that world, followed by a brief moment of darkness and the sensation of Karama's searing chakra penetrating me. Then a quick kaleidoscope of images, as if he's being shown his life as it might have been if it hadn't been for that fateful night. His last memory is of one of his vaguely familiar clansmen coming up to him and offering to help him train. He agrees and listens carefully to the explanation, and then several other people join them and offer to share their meal, while taking out boxes of a bento. He could not refuse and agreed. Then darkness, and later, it feels like just a few moments later, sharp unpleasant voices hit my head. How much more time do we have? A dark-haired man I didn't recognize asked, already the fourth one if you count the previous piece of memory that Sasuke had shown me. And according to her, he was one of the people who volunteered to help. No more than ten minutes, the speaker grinned. How do you think these nobodies will react to the puppy's death? And it does the thing that finally brings Sasuke to his senses. A refreshing kick to the side, the one where the kunai was stuck, but I know the wound isn't there anymore. Apparently, the chakra that Kurama had passed on to Sasuke before we split up had patched up his side when he came to this world. This allowed him to survive and even recover, but it was no longer enough to protect him from the blow. Therefore, the rather light body of a thirteen-year-old boy flies to the side and falls back to the floor. Sasuke didn't think any more, and a sibilant whisper rang out in the room. Chidori Nagashi! For a few seconds, there are screams that even cover the chirping of equipment, and then an oppressive silence. I see Sasuke struggle to his feet and walk over to the nearest person without thinking. His eyes are wild, and he looks from one person to the other. He goes to one of them and picks up the magazine pouch. He pulls out a kunai and, without thinking, cuts the throats of each of the unconscious people. When he kills the last one, the door flies off its hinges and Itachi flies in. Sharingan lights up in his eyes. He looks for enemies in the room, but does not find them. Itachi calms down a little and takes a closer look at his Otodo. When he sees the blood still fresh on his side, and most importantly, understands what color it is, fear flashes in his eyes, and he rushes in his brother's direction. Sasuke, Itachi's voice breaks. I'm fine, Nesan. Sasuke says indifferently, and only I can see how pained he looks at his brother and how hard it is for him to keep a mask of indifference on his face. Where am I? In the old clan hideout. About a few hours run from Kanoha. Itachi says, stopping and looking at him longingly. Itachi, did you find Sasuke? Abito's voice bursts into the room, distracting both brothers with his question. We've already explored the rest of the shelter, but it's not there. Yes, I found it, Itachi replies, and a moment later, two people appear in the doorway. If I recognized Abito, although he looked a little unusual without the scars and was younger, then the other one was unknown to me, but according to the conversation of those who were killed by Sasuke, it was Shur's way. I remember hearing about him from Itachi and Bisan. He's a man with unique eyes. 
Itachi then said that we had the same ideals and aspirations. Wow. The guy I recognized the sure sway whistled. Is that what you call them, Itachi? No, it's me, shursui san Sasuke replied shortly, which confirmed my guesses about the guy's identity and clearly surprised his relatives. Everyone's eyes locked on my friend. It was hard to read their expressions, but the fact that all three of them were frowning at each other and looking at each other in alarm didn't make me think much of anything. I'm not surprised, I just know that this is not a 13-year-old teenager who has never killed, but an adult shinobi with a difficult fate, but they are not, so their anxiety is understandable. However, it is very difficult to stop Sasuke, he just raised an eyebrow and expressed his attitude to what is happening. Um, I suggest we get out. Abito broke the silence first. I sent a message to Sensei. Soon it will be crowded with A and B U. Sasuke shrugs indifferently and walks towards the exit without looking at the others. Wait, Sasuke. Shursway calls out. Sasuke stopped and shot him a look. Will you, uh, go like this? Shursway asked him cautiously and pointed at his bloody side. Aren't you hurt? I'm fine. The blood isn't mine, Sasuke said curtly and without stopping again, he headed for the exit, followed by the others. Flashback. They didn't ask me any more questions. They thought I was in shock and tried not to touch me. We made our way to Kanoha in silence. During this time, I managed to master the memory I got a little, and I was already only worried about you. Sasuke explained to my surprised look. After arriving in the village, I was sent to the clan's ironing and then I was brought before my father. To be honest, I do not know how I held back all this time. The only thing that stopped me was that I knew that if I lost my temper, my chances of finding you would drop to zero, Naruto. Flashback he didn't let me answer his unusually long speech, and after a brief moment of disorientation, I see the picture again. Sasuke already washed and changed, is sitting across from a scowling man and a worried-looking woman, and next to him is Itachi, who is cautiously glancing in his direction. It was easy enough to recognize everyone present. I'd seen them in the only surviving photo of Sasuke. They were Figaka-san and Makoto-san, his parents, but I knew Itachi personally at the time. Sasuke's deceptively relaxed frame showed that he was very nervous. It looks like we were very lucky that he restrained himself. Sasuke, the man begins softly. You do realize that you've shamed us, right? Sasuke doesn't say anything, but only a blind person wouldn't notice the threat coming from his figure. You let yourself be captured. This is unacceptable for my son, the man continued. You may have destroyed the enemy yourself later, but I doubt it, but I'm not happy. Sasuke chuckled and said coldly, I'm not interested. Sasuke, Mikoto-san called out in alarm. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to go to the academy. Sasuke stood up and bowed. I don't think the exams were cancelled, and just because I've just come back from the road doesn't change my obligation to take it. I'm glad you understand the situation correctly, Sasuke, Figaka-san said coldly. You can go now. Tasama. Attack a tree to interject, looking worriedly at his brother who was already showing so little emotion. Hmm, apparently, he wasn't used to this Sasuke. I didn't get used to it right away, though. I remember that it took me more than a year for him to begin to look at least a little like a human, and then he began to express emotions only in my presence, but the rest of us did not receive such an honor. A silent bow, and Sasuke leaves the room without changing his expression. Flashback, that's it. Sasuke tells me wearily, and puts his head in my lap. I start to run my fingers through his hair, which, despite its spiky appearance, is surprisingly soft. I don't want to talk, and there's nothing to talk about. We're both good, and each of us has managed to fall short. However, 
nothing terrible happened. Although now I'm sure that Tasan and Figaka-san will start watching us closely. And who can they trust to keep track of their children? One of the students, of course. Figaka-san doesn't have them, at least not officially, but Tasan did. If you believe his memory, then all three of his students are alive. But the same Nora Rin, now an Uchiha, is only a Chunin, and her specialty is an Irayanin, which is not suitable for tracking and protecting any heirs. That leaves Kakashi and Abito. Hmm. I hope it's Kakashi. It is more familiar with him, and it will be easier to explain Sasuke's skills to him. Abito is also not bad, but considering that he is from the same clan as Sasuke, it is unlikely that they will give him to us, because this practice, although not officially, is frowned upon. Tasan wouldn't do that, and apparently Fugaku-san wouldn't either. Considering that it would be easier to keep track of us if we were together, it's no big deal, and Sasuke and I probably knew that we wouldn't abandon each other. I don't know about Itachi, but Ao and I told Tasan exactly that. So there will be Kakashi and one team. Good. I looked up at the sun, which clearly indicated that it was nearing ten, and that we had a distribution at eleven, and gave Sasuke a light tug on his hair. When he looked at me with displeasure, I said, Get up, we have to go to the academy. No one cancelled the distribution. One team, you think? He looked at me questioningly. I'm sure. I said, and snorted derisively. It'll make it easier to follow us. We both stood out. A mentor? Sasuke raised an eyebrow questioningly. The one that Tasan and Figaku-san trust is a grin. The most suitable student. Kakashi. Sasuke chuckled, coming to the same conclusions as I did. Although this is not surprising, since he also knew the whole history of my family and Kakashi-sensei in particular. I hope the third one isn't Sakura. The class hasn't changed. I reminded her mockingly. So dream on. Seisuka responded and got up, dusted off the non-existent dirt and stretched, did a couple of warm-up sets. He nodded to himself and said, I'm ready. Come on. He finished and held out his hand to help me up. After waiting for me to clean up and remove the barrier, I silently walked towards the academy. 